Good morning, you guys. Happy Monday. So in case you don't know, I had a shower pan break in my house and it like ruined <laughs> a whole portion of my house. Uh, so I'm at a hotel right now while they're doing the toxic part of the cleanup, the remediation. And I wanted to play this for you so we could quickly talk about it this morning. Wasn't a lot happening this weekend, thankfully, because I was working like crazy on um, the mystery of Malaysia 370 and P. Diddy deep dive with everything, you know, the all-inclusive deep dive. So <laughs> I was like, thank goodness, not much going on. But I did want to comment this. Kyle Richards, as you guys know, went on Kelly Ripa's show, um, is an open book. And this is what she had to say about season 13. I thought we could listen to it together really quick and then I could give you some comments on it. It kind of triggered me a little. Okay, so Kelly Ripa starts this show with what I think the main purpose of this show was with Kyle, which was to set the record straight that Andy Cohen doesn't force housewives to drink and doesn't foster a hostile environment. Obviously, Kelly Ripa is good friends with Andy Cohen, so she's protecting him, I suppose, and so is Kyle Richards. But listen to the way that they address it. It's really, you, well, you'll see. You know, I'm so pissed off and I, I want to get your take on it because there's like these accusatory headlines that Andy Cohen fosters a, a, like a, a toxic or a hostile work environment. Now, I know Andy really well. I've worked with Andy. He's one of my best friends. Um, I know you know Andy really well. Uh, can you give me your experience working with him? over the years well i also am angry about that because um I, i've known andy as well as i know him you know he's always made a point to keep a, a, his distance to a certain degree with the housewives he has to there's too many you know it gets messy for him but i have only seen him be professional and you know thoughtful you know i, I said this season he checked on me more than ever to make sure everything was okay that i was doing okay um, I have never been pressured to drink on the show. I mean, I've certainly never seen um, drugs around any, any of this. I was just like, what is this? This is so... I know him. I know him like off camera. I know him privately. We've traveled together. We've gone on vacation together. Like pre, pre him having kids. You know, I've never seen a drug around him. It's like the most... I'm so offended by it. I'm so angry over it. I just, you know, because especially years and years, I try to get like dish out of him. Like which housewife is a pain in the ass? Which one do you love the most? Who do you, you know, and his, he truly loves you all equally. Well, not equally, Kelly. No, but he's like, <laughs> no, but he's like, it's like picking my favorite child. He's like, I won't do that. Like, I just won't do Even that. Even her PC statement really went too does far value women so highly. He's somebody with a great relationship with his mother, with his sister. He's surrounded by women, all of his best friends, and he really values women. And right. so I found it oh, okay. highly upsetting. Well, I bet Kelly Ripa did because she was embroiled in a scandal with the producer of Vanderpump Rules before he was a producer. And in fact, he was a reality star. And he was saying that she was trying to blackmail him, Kelly Ripa, yep. And she was the producer of his show. And so, of course, she's going to feel for Andy Cohen. But then I wanted to show you this, yeah, too. Here's Brandy Glanville. The last time I was on Bravo Watch What Happens Live with Jenny McCarthy at Andy stopped the show in the middle so Jenny McCarthy could take a 10-minute bathroom break, in quotes, She's saying she's like Kim Richards, I guess. It was the only time that ever happened on all my times on Watch What Happens Live. Crazy. So I guess you know what that means. When Brandy brings up a bathroom, it can only mean one thing. Bring the pasta. It made me angry and it made me really sad because I feel like that's the time John, I'm that we're living in right now. It's very dangerous to make accusations like that. It's not like it used to be. Right. So it really made me sad. Yeah, me too. Me too. It made me sad and it made me angry. Now, you know, you know, Brandy Glanville. Listen, she says it herself. I, how am I going to work now? Right. Basically what happened with the uh, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip, 
um, has halted her career and she's needs to make money. So I think that's what, you know, I think that's what that's all about. Honestly, I mean, it's not like, I don't think she can blame the show for drinking. I mean, her book is called drinking and tweeting. Like that's her brand. That's what she is. So, you know, I, I don't know, but you know, I think she's just angry and hurt and you know, she's someone who's like, how am I going to make money now? If she, if, if she, you know, her main source of income was doing these reality shows. Right. Well, first of all, I'm not sure Kelly Ripa would be privy to any of Andy Cohen's behavior that Brandy's alluding to. Brandy Glanville is alluding to, I think, mostly his behavior that has come out on Grinder. All right. It's not to do with his like gatherings with friends or any of that stuff. I don't think so. What is your relationship like with the women post reunion? After that airs, is there a cooling down period? Does everybody go their separate ways? Are bonds formed that we didn't see before? Like, take me through the process of post-reunion. The cameras shut down, the false eyelashes come off, then what happens? Um, Well, you know, each season is different, obviously. Last year, before this past season we just shot, um, was the first time ever we've all just left nobody we didn't do a cheer we didn't nobody hugged nobody went to have a drink or eat dinner after nothing and that did not feel good it felt right. horrible you know when when i go into the reunion i always am looking to clear anything up and have closure and for me personally um i did clear a lot of things up of course you're always like oh i forgot that point why didn't i remember to say that you know it's hard in the moment and there are always women cutting you off and then andy's jumping to the next question you're like I just want everyone to shut up for a minute. Let me get my points out. But, um, you know, when I left there, I felt in a worse place with Dorit. Mm-hmm. I felt better initially because, oh, now I've seen her. I'm kind of breaks the ice. I'm feeling better now. And then I felt worse. And then later I saw that she read my text message on camera, which, you know, I have, I have a rule. And in all the years on the show, I would never... Never. never have, never right. will repeat something someone said to me off camera or show a text that wasn't one of those group texts that sometimes they'll have us read in our interviews and stuff. Ever. I never have. Even with someone who could be perceived as my enemy. Never have, never will. So when I saw that, I cried. I cannot tell you. I It was like a punch in the gut to me. It just really, really hurt. Why do you think she did that? Do you think she did that to try to solidify her role in next season. It seems like a lot of times when somebody does something so low, <laughs> low, low, dirty, nasty, I'm trying to find the, the diplomatic word for it. But when somebody does something like that, it's oftentimes because they feel their own security is in jeopardy. And then they've got this thing that somehow can revitalize their relevance. I heard a lot of people were saying when she did that. And, you know, I just, as someone who knows her, I really thought, you know, I never thought she would do that. So I was left also to wonder what was her motivation behind that? Because her whole thing was, you know, oh, you know, you're saying that we're not such as close friends as I claim to be. Well, do you think any one of my genuine friends would have done that? No. Do you think anyone that I'm close with in my personal life, forget camera, no camera, would read that? And the funny thing is, is that she said that it was manipulative. If it was manipulative, I could have called her a week before or two weeks before and been like, oh, you know, I miss, miss you. Let's put all this behind us. Let's have lunch. No, that's not what I was saying. I was saying I'm in a really bad place. I'm in a lot of pain. You know, we both are struggling right now. She's had her issues. I said, you know, we have a lot at stake here. Our families. I was being the complete opposite of manipulative. Right. I was being completely upfront about it. You were being forthright. Exactly. And to me, when she said that, I thought, well, that honestly says more about you than it does about me. That's what I was just about to say. Have you spoken to her since? I sent her a text saying, I am, wow, I'm shocked that you would do that. Never in 13 years, I've never had, even the worst of worst situations, I've never had someone do that to me. So. And and now Kyle will read the response. I'm just kidding. I know you are. (laughs) I didn't didn't even get a cricket emoji. No, nothing. No, she didn't respond. She didn't respond. 
No, it, I, and I, I tried to make the point in the reunion, which I don't know if that, I think that's, I don't know if that's tomorrow's, it was last week's, because I didn't watch last week's, because that was really hard for me, and the season finale was hard for me to watch, I didn't watch that whole thing, I saw part of it in the dressing room at Watch What Happens Live, and it was just too painful, but I was trying to say that, you know, you have friends that are in different categories, you know, I love Dorit, I love Pique, I love their family, you know, we have gone on um, two trips with our husbands together, you know, of course we do, you know, or trip on the show, and I do consider her, you know, someone that I love. She lives right up the street from me. I can walk to her house. But is she that girl that you, you know, you know, is she your first text in the morning, or do you hang out at lunch, or do you work out together? You go on hikes and talk. No, we 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 don't have that relationship. But that doesn't mean she's not important to me. Right. So when she said, I felt like I was replaced. I was like, we were not even in that. We we were never like that. So why are you using a you know a, a sound bite to so- hurt me? Just to be clear, Dory Kemsley and PK have a reputation of being social climbers. And I think that they were happy being Mauricio and Carl's friend while they thought it would work out for them and it would be beneficial to them, including, of course, Mauricio doing a show with PK, which I think they were working on for some time. As you guys know, I saw some digs in his UK show against Mauricio and Kyle, the PK like put in there. So I could tell that their relationship wasn't as good as it was being portrayed in season 12 and even 11. So it wasn't surprising to me, this breakdown. But it's funny that Kyle convinced herself that Dorit would never turn on her. Because there's a lot of housewives that feel that way with Dorit. Because she's really good at getting you to believe that she's like, oh, I love you so much. Okay, lovey-dovey. You know, that kind of girl. But, like, behind the scenes, not so much. Kyle, you'd think she was smarter at this point. By the way, happy Easter. So Cosmopolitan did a deep dive of when Buying Beverly Hills shot, and it appears that it began shooting season two in May of 2023. And then it wrapped sometime in July, but then they did pick up cameras and do a few shoots outside of that timeline. Episode 10 sees the cast all come together for one last time for a party, which according to Sophia's Instagram, was filmed on 16th of July, 2023, after she posted a picture of herself with the cast. And it says, this is a wrap. And then they go on to say, however, that wasn't technically the end of filming. Following the big party, the episode then does a big time jump to three months later, which would take us up to October 2023 and sees Mauricio and his daughters discuss the split from Kyle mirroring the start of the series. The girls ask their dad about the comment he made to TMZ on 28th September 2023, in which he clarified he and Kyle had separated and discuss what will happen next for their family. And then you see the bottom, the sum up is that it ends late October, 2023. Now I bring this up because this will probably explain to you much better why Mauricio's show, Buying Beverly Hills, seems to have a lot more tea dropping than Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now this was released by Bravo. We know cameras started rolling on season 13 sometime in February of 2023. So much, much earlier than buying Beverly Hills started shooting. Let's see, March, April, May, almost three months earlier. And they wrapped at the end of May of 2023, season 13. And this is about the time that buying Beverly Hills activates filming. So it explains a lot why Kyle is not spilling her guts as much on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and appears to be doing this more in Buying Beverly Hills. I think it's simply that by the time Kyle started shooting Buying with her kids and husband, a lot of it had already been leaked in the press. And so it was obviously something that they had to address and they were incentivized to talk about it rather than to hide it like they were during the filming of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Although to the fans, of Bravo's dismay. Well, there's a rumor that Dorit might be trying to sell her house as a pocket listing and has her eye on a house nearby. So we'll see if that ends up being true. But I'll leave it here with you guys. Do you think Dorit and Kyle will ever make up? Is Brandy telling the truth about Andy or is she lying like she was about Kim Richards in the bathroom? You let me know what you guys think. I can't wait to read the comments. And wish me well, I'm going to need it.
like, subscribe, and hit the notification button.